Welcome to the third part of the rock sculpting tutorial. In this part I will be using the Malu rock I just created in ZBrush to place out the base of the rock formation inside of Maya. As said in part 2, I'm mainly using Maya for better movement controls. You could use as well use ZBrush for this and I would normally do so myself. But since this formation is quite a bit bigger than my usual work, I think it's worth an extra export and bring it to a traditional 3D software. To start, I will prepare the reference material to make placement easier. I'm creating a new material for the reference rock so that I can more easily distinguish between the reference and the model rocks. I will also make the material partially transparent. I'm putting the reference meshes into their own layer so I can more easily select them and also to be able to make them unselectable while I'm working with the model rocks. Although I'm currently working in Maya, you can find similar tools and features in most traditional 3D software. So don't feel that you have to use Maya to be able to follow this tutorial. So let's start importing the model rock. I'll start by making some variation templates of the model rock, so I can more easily and faster duplicate variations during placement. If I were to use the same version for all of the placement, it's easy to forget to rotate it around and end up using the same side for a lot of the placement. We want to do our best to avoid getting a tiled or duplicated look. To do that, I will try to use different sides and sizes of the molly rock when the rocks are close to each other. I will be using the rocks in a way similar to this. I can also scale the molly rock to change the look even further and to make it fit where it normally wouldn't. So let's start placing the rocks out. I'm gonna shrink the rocks a bit to a more usable size. At first I usually try my best to stick to the reference as close as possible. But the more I work on something the looser I get and I go in the direction I think looks the best. Even if it doesn't line up perfectly with my reference. Coming up with ideas and designs is a process that never really ends. Especially when you start to see your ideas take shape. Usually that's when you start to see what works or not. So don't be afraid to do changes to your original design. Of course in a professional setting, there's not always time or room for creative changes. But when you do have the option, don't be afraid to explore new ideas, even later on in the creation process. Since I'm currently just placing the rocks according to the reference, there is not much to look or talk about, so let's skip ahead. So as you can see, I managed to place most of the bottom section of the formation, and I'm currently quite happy with how it's looking. I'm also not relying as heavily on the reference rock anymore. I'm mostly just turning it on from time to time to get a rough look at where I am. Even after placing a rock, I can always go back to rotate or scale it to look for a side or size that fits better.
I'm trying to add these deeper pocket areas where I can, as I want to break up the flat surface and also get some interesting angles for the render. As I'm only doing a single frame render, I want to create as many angles and pockets as possible to increase the amount of interesting lighting situations visible in that single render. Not really doing anything different at this point, just roughly placing the rocks to fit the reference while looking for ways to improve on the design. So let's skip ahead again. At this point I'm basically finished with the modular rock placement. So now I'll start preparing the rocks for export to ZBrush. I'm going to combine the rocks into groups before I export. I'll put the rocks into groups based on how connected they are to each other and how likely it is that I will have to work on them at the same time. Later inside of ZBrush, I will use Dynamesh to turn each group into one big rock that I can easily work on. Using groups makes it less heavy to work on in comparison to combining the whole thing. It also makes it easier to focus and navigate around the part you are currently working on. I will also keep the ground separate. If I need to sculpt across the groups, I can use Combine and Dynamesh all the groups at the end of the sculpting process. Once all parts and groups have been exported, we are finished with Maya and we can head over to ZBrush. Let's finish up and end this part here in Maya. In the next part we will add detail and variation to the rock formation inside of ZBrush. See you in the next part.